beer has this, this beauty. I mean, it, it's a social uh, instrument and you can do a lot of different things with it, but when it breaks down, not everyone is a beer nerd like you. <laughs> Kickstarter uh, campaign in uh, February, March of 2012, uh, and we sort of looked at that as our litmus test. You know, we we'd thrown around the idea of like, you know, this brewery thing uh, it would be really cool and it would be very successful, but you know, of course, like your parents and your friends are, you know, oh, your beer's great, you do it, you know, like, oh, it'd be so good. Uh, and that's great. We can get some strangers, to, you know, give us money to help get this thing up and running, um, then there's a real sort of value and momentum behind it that you know, it, it could work. So we did that, we succeeded, we raised $30,000 that way. There weren't many breweries that have done Kickstarter. So I think at the time we finished ours with like the third highest Kickstarter campaign for a brewery. We looked at it from a, you know, we're homebrewing now, we've done some you know, homebrew events and beer has been really well received, um, but we kind of always looked at it as we want to do this on a grand scale. That's kind of the, the model we, we sold early, and kind of the model we committed to. So the brewery uh, opened up officially, our tasting room opened October 18th, 2014. So we started brewing uh, officially in September of last year. And uh, we're on a 20 barrel Sprinkman two vessel brew house. My first experience, I really started getting into it uh, after college uh, when I moved to Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, their, their brewing scene was going pretty good. So my background, I, I started out as, as a home brewer, started out in the kitchen. Um, Self-taught in that right, but once, really early on, I knew that I was in for it. I really enjoyed the whole process, and then also I didn't live too far from the Siebel Institute. Uh, so knowing that I wanted to do the business side and the difference in, the, in um, some of the technical side, knowing that we wanted to have a large production brewery to start out, that there was things that I didn't know from just the operations standpoint. So started taking, I took classes at the Siebel Institute um, on the technical side, more production operations focused. And then we're sitting next to our newest uh, fermenter, so that really, we started out with four fermenters four months ago and added the fifth now. Um, we really started to expand the portfolio and get in. We started out with four, four beers and now, um, I think right now we have eight, eight or nine different beers on tap in the tap room. So to be able to um, keep driving that side of it. Our, we started with uh, four beers here. Um, we wanted a, a variety. I mean, being a, being a craft brewer, in a, I mean, you, you have to do an IPA. If you can't make an IPA and you're an American craft brewer, then you're gonna have some problems. So we started with that and then I always enjoy a, I started going away from a lot of hops and going more into finding uh, lighter, crisper beers uh, and that's where the Kolsch comes in, but wanting to take it. I think what inspired the style, what, what we did with our Kolsch is we dry hop in Cascade, so we took a German style and even the hops that we use, it, it drinks more like a Pilsner in that right than a Kolsch in my mind. And then dry hopping of a Cascade gives it a little different flair that you're not expecting. That's what we wanted to do with the Kolsch. That's what I thought would be end up being our flagship, but it's really the market has will always, you know, they'll throw you for a, a loop. In the tasting room, the IPA sells, it sells the most, the Kolsch is slightly behind, and then the brown ale, or, I'm sorry, and then the fourth is the brown ale. And that's a style that not, I think it's, it's, it's something that we didn't want to go full porter, um, or, but it's definitely not more of a hop forward, it's more of a malt forward. You're gonna get a lot more of that chocolatey taste. It pairs well with food. I, I think I've had, we've had it with barbecue and different things. So it's kind of a, that's been a surprising beer that it's a style that I don't think, there's not, it's not really a go-to beer for many people, but um, I think that one is, is probably my favorite surprise that's come out. We have an Imperial IPA, we've done, we've done an alt beer. We've, we're, our next beer to come out, um, it'll be at the uh, Winter Warmer Fest in Cleveland. It'll be a Baltic Porter. We have uh, we've done a Keller beer. We did that in the fall. Um, so I think overall we've done about 12 different styles. If I were to talk to 
my initial homebrew self back uh, when I started, I think I, I would say, you know, why are you why are you brewing? Is it is it just you like the Saturday, or are you trying to go into something? It's kind of knowing what you're doing because then you're going to drive um, how how you're brewing. And I I think looking back, um, just kind of going crazy with it and having fun and trying different styles. That's that's really I think the beauty of the homebrew is because it. Um, you can you can be really flexible with it. It's a good community that um, people share a lot of the information with. You know, you don't have to adhere to different styles. And if you want to throw a chocolate bar in your mash tun, you can. Just do it. Like it, it's don't be afraid of a batch not turning out. Don't be afraid of um, trying to do all grain or trying to do something because some of the best beers I brewed when I started starting out. I wouldn't be able to repeat again that it was it just was an accident that something couldn't get the mash temperature right or all, all everything that we were following directions or whatever didn't work but then that beer was great but if, if you want to go to the next step then the question you know if you want if you're if you think hey you know I, I like this I want to get uh, more into brewing and 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 I've see you know all the different brew pubs or breweries open up um, that's when uh, you need you have to make the decision that are you gonna go and you know are you gonna be an artisanal brewery and you know what, what's gonna set you apart you're going to either need to sell your beer for a higher price or sell a lot of it in your tasting room um, because you end up running in it's a margins game in my opinion if you're wanting to distribute out and have it if you want a strict tasting room you could probably get around away with three to seven barrel system. Um, if you're wanting to do strict production, um, now the nice thing with the Ohio, so the rules of thumb change is how much you can get out of your tasting room. Um, so you, if you're doing both, you could probably get out from a 10 barrel system. We started out with a 20 barrel system. I think 15 or 20 would be the minimum if you're doing production, just because every time that you think, okay, I'll get a seven, then I'll expand. There's always something else that, helps, that requires a lot of money. What's next for, for us, uh, our, our biggest next step is starting to uh, package in cans. It's a better overall package. I mean, you're not gonna get light struck beer. You know, it's a nice clean seal. Um, me coming from a design marketing background, you know, it's got a nice full canvas with artwork and branding and everything. Um, and empty cans, cheaper to ship than empty bottle. Uh, they just stack up nicer in the truck, they weigh less. Pal tips over, you've got it's really exploded the different variety of breweries that you can get there, get six packs of cans. Um, so we're excited to, um, to do that as well, just um, from the standpoint, kind of the different imagery and stuff we've done with the beers, it's, it's, it's sports, it's outdoors, and so having the cans allows it kind of to continue down that way, and we just got the proofs in today from the manufacturers, so it's pretty neat to actually see stuff that we mocked up on the computer uh, two years ago, uh, actually hold it in our hands. So try to get our cans all over Columbus. Uh. Um, laziness, <laughs> that's why I don't like to, it's laziness in certain things, but you have to, because you're paying attention to so many, the details and so many other things, that I think your, your, your personal appearance kind of goes, that's why it's easy to just throw a flannel on, like, like this, I feel dressed up because I just have a nice sweatshirt, but um, yeah, throw a hat and a flannel and not have to shave, you're, I mean, it's a 12 hour day, it's cold back here, <laughs> facial hair kind of helps, so. <laughs>